Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. Just want to say that uh, congratulations. Everybody did it. And it wasn't easy. I can tell you that because it's been uh, quite a long slog throughout uh, the bear market. But here we are. And today, whoops, that's totally not right. Let's refresh that. This is I've had this open for, gosh, I don't know, four or five days or so. Let's see what the Bitcoin price is today. 72,000. Now, I think and correct me if I'm wrong. I think we topped out at around 73, somewhere around 73,002. And that was yesterday. So it's amazing just how uh, sentiment changes and just how well we do off. Look at this one month, three month, one year. Everything's looking pretty good. So this is great. And I just want to do a quick video just to kind of uh, bring everybody together and just say that, you know, I know it wasn't easy. You did your job, which was to buy in the bear market when everybody's laughing at you. And I want you to take a I want to take a trip down memory lane just to remind you how we got here, because it wasn't just like. You just showed up and were like, I'm just going to dollar cost average, no big deal. It was a slog. It was a big pain. And I just want to go through a couple of things and just remind you what industry you're in, what sector that you're at, and just how hard it actually was and how time really does trump all. This is a video that I posted today here on uh, my X account. And this is uh, for the real estate show, but it goes back to 2013. And the offer... Well, I'm just gonna have you listen to this. And just rem I just want you to remind yourself just how important time is. It's not so much of timing the market, it's time in the market. And just take a listen to this and just tell me if you don't wouldn't wanna be this individual who is making, making the deal. Take a listen to this. I'm looking at about 50,000 Bitcoins. Bitcoin? And Bitcoin. That puts it in at around 13 and change. But you wanna pay in Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> You sent us an offer in Bitcoin? I'll be totally honest with you, Ryan. That's not even the biggest problem. Okay. This offers a million dollars below ask. Right. At the end of the day, you just have to look at gross value. We're asking $14 million for a two bedroom apartment. <laughs> First of all, uh, 50,000 Bitcoin back then, if they're trying to get 13 million, that's roughly about $260, $300 for Bitcoin. So I'm going to guess that this, this piece was around 2013. You know how much that will be worth today? $3.6 billion. So, and let me say that again, 50,000 Bitcoin back then was 13 million bucks. That apartment, that two bedroom apartment, that 13 million, right now it may be the same price. It may be a little bit elevated, who knows? But I can tell you, you don't go anywhere from going from 13 million to 3.6 billion in any market besides the market that we're at. And that's just that piece. And uh, it just goes to show you that again, just it's all about getting into the market and the time in. And this is uh, one of my first one. This is what I based the, uh, the thumbnail on. This is Jim Cramer, everybody's favorite. I want you to look at these prices real quick. I don't know if you noticed this as we came in, but this is uh, Cramer essentially telling everybody what an idiot they are as Bitcoin was 16,800. This is probably around 2022, I'm gonna guess. Ether was around $1,200, Litecoin was 65 bucks, and Solana was uh, under $12 at 1183. So again, you've got this from all sides. You've got this from people you, you talk about crypto with and you try to orange pill them, you try to get them into, into digital assets or like that's stupid, I'm not buying that. Then you got people like this on their show and it's not just Jim Cramer's show, it's all across MSNBC, it's all the different platforms, it's podcasts telling you what a moron you are for actually getting into this. And you had to endure those types of things and you had to sit up and go, you know what? I know you think you know about traditional markets and that's fine, but I know where things are gonna go. So again, just take a listen to this and just remember how tough it was to get here. Take a listen. I think that everybody who owns these various coins, you know, Solana, Litecoin, I think you're, I do think you're an idiot, okay? I did not go to college to get stupid. These people who own these things should not own them. Because you're stupid, you're dumb, and you're a moron. And you can't make any decisions because you have to listen to somebody like Jim Cramer, who's been in traditional markets, because he is an expert. Experts are really good at what has been. They are really not good at what is becoming. So again, why do I need the expert to tell me what has been? I don't need you. And uh, you were smart enough to not listen to junk like that. And that just takes us, that was just, what, 2022? So we're talking about two, two and a half years ago or so, almost three. And um, 
Now we'll jump forward to about three or four weeks ago. This is from a comment. I love the comments. I really like the negative comments for some reason because it gives me a chuckle. I'm under the assumption that everybody is either just sarcastic or having a really crappy day. So when I see these things, I just, it's, I don't really make too much of it, but it is the sentiment. And this was uh, one of the NFA live shows we did. And this is from HL Hunter. And he says, eight months of excuses, GFY. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe you can tell me in the comments section. Nothing but excuses. And then that last one is Bitcoin is an S show, just like this show, which I have to tell you one thing. That was pretty funny. So uh, for HL Hunter, I, I get up to you. That was, that, that, was, that was pretty good. And again, and I, I wrote this here. I said, just remember that uh, the people that you're trying to help, some people just aren't going to get it. They either don't have the mentality for it or they don't have the steel in their spine to take it. And they just have to learn by themselves. And that's pretty much how it goes. You can only help so many people. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And that's pretty much what it is. So just give everybody a grain of salt and say, hey, I know you don't get it. That's fine. But I'm here to try to help you as best I can. But uh, don't take it too personal. And then lastly, uh, this was uh, from a couple of days ago. And Brad Becker says, aren't you sick of giving wrong predictions? Literally about 95% of what you said over the years has not come true. Speculation is cancer. And I said, which I thought this was pretty good. I said, hey, 95% is pretty good. I'm almost 100% wrong. That's, <laughs> I mean, if you're looking at like the inverse Kramer, that's pretty good. But in, in all seriousness, um, again, sentiment changes as things start to recoup. And I think we're in that stage where people are starting to really realize like, shoot, if I didn't do the things in the bear market like I was supposed to do, maybe I should start do them now. But that is just uh, my thought process. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. But that just kind of goes, that just kind of brings us up to today. So you had to endure all that stuff, all the, all the people telling you what a moron you are. And today, BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF has surpassed $30 billion in assets in record time. That means that this is the fastest growing ETF in history. And to also, on top of that, as far as ETFs, I don't know if you knew this, but the numbers came out. It looks like GDP growth is 2.8%. And it's uh, essentially, if our GDP is 2.8, I think we were expecting around three, but it still means it's, uh, it's an uptick or it's, it's, cr it's going along just fine. Consumer spending, also the main engine of the economy, rose at 3.7 annual pace, largest increase in six quarters. So, again, with you've got some pretty good liquidity, you've got some pretty good economic data. There's some kind of funny things in there, but it's during the election season. So, what are you going to get? I mean, you're going to get people that are just kind of kind of cherry pick some data to to show what their candidate uh, is good for or bad for. That doesn't matter. Liquidity is there, quantitative easing is there, ETFs are there, sentiment is there. They had 870 million inflow. And if we take a look at it, this is the flow from, this was October, this is just yesterday. Mostly come, came from BlackRock, you know, for some reason, 13 trillion assets under management, they kind of know what they're doing. Fidelity, ARC, BitB, uh, total net flow is 11,000. And we can see that again, we are reaching all time highs. This is pretty big. We went from, I remember reporting this of like 340, somewhere around here. 348,000. Now we're at almost 380,000. We're going to get 400,000 Bitcoin. And if you want to take a look at the holdings, you know who holds the most? It used to be these guys, Grayscale. But they keep dumping, which is fine. That's their God given right. But uh, now we've got a new champ, and that will be BlackRock, as they have 357K of Bitcoin, the holdings. The second biggest one will be MicroStrategy. So again, at. Uh, Probably wasn't easy to do. And of course, you get, you know, you've heard of stuff like this, like, and this never, it, it, it always, it, it, it's never a surprise when you want to hear this. When we're like going up and up and up and people say, you know, this is the last chance you got of buying Bitcoin at 70K or something goofy like that. Look, it's not going to keep going up. But when we talk about Bitcoin to 30K or 20K or 10K or zero, I don't know, it kind of seems kind of crazy. But Again, if you hear these types of things over and over again, you might be thinking, maybe I should stop buying. Maybe I shouldn't dollar cross average. Maybe as the price goes down, I shouldn't. But you didn't do that. Now here you are. And you get the stuff like, this is a bull trap, or <laughs> this is funny. Capo was right, or Germany was right. One thing on Germany, I, I will remind you, Germany, they sold 
was it 50,000 Bitcoin or 5,000 Bitcoin? There's a great website, Germany Bitcoin Regret Meter. <laughs> and it shows you that, uh, yeah, Germany's potential lost because Bitcoin, here it is, total Bitcoin sold by Germany was 50,000. And that was on, I want to say that was May. Let's see. No, sorry. It was July 2024 because they had confiscated Bitcoin. And they're like, you know what? July is good, right? August, September, September. Just about uh, three or four months later, uh, what they could have gotten today was 656 million more if they just would have held on. I think it's going to be a bigger mistake, bigger mistake as we have potentially nations putting in Bitcoin as a reserve asset. And if, they, if we do that, Bitcoin's really, or Germany's really gonna be kicking itself. And uh, we have that piece. So we have all these things happening. So then there's other sentiment pieces that I, I, I came across, which I don't know what you think about this, but uh, I read this and I was like, I don't, I don't get it because I, I use Coinbase. Well, this is what's going on. Coinbase and Visa direct rollout instant funding amid a soaring Bitcoin demand. I mean, we see it right now, right? I mean, there's a little bit of a cool off, obviously. You know, we got it at only 72,000. So it's not going to go 73, 74, 75, but this must have been in the works for quite some time. Here's what it is. There's going to be an integration with Visa Direct and Coinbase users with eligible debit cards can now deposit funds into their Coinbase accounts in real time, removing traditional delays in transferring money. Visa said. Uh, in addition to real-time deposits, users can purchase cryptos directly with their Visa debit cards and withdraw funds to their bank accounts without delay. So I've got, me personally, I have Coinbase. I don't know what you guys use as far as like your centralized exchanges, but let me know in the comments. Do you have this assigned to your bank? Do you have to do wire transfers or something like that where it's you can't do ACH? You have to do wire transfers and wait for you know 24 to 48 or 72 hours? Or can you just have it real time? Because when I connected my bank account, it was like you have X amount of liquidity. I asked them to increase it, which they did. And then I could trade as much as I pretty much wanted to. I mean, up to a certain limit. So I don't know what this is. I don't know if other people have problems like this, but I've been with Coinbase since 2017. So I don't know how this works out. Anyhow, let me know what uh, about that in the comment section. I'm trying to make sense of that article, if there really is that much demand and so on and so forth. And lastly, I just want to give a shout out to the dog go to the moon uh, community. I've done many a video on different communities, but I got to tell you, if, if you're big on communities, I've never had this kind of display for a community that talks so positively about it. Like, hey guys, we're on this channel, you know, go to this channel and, you know, make sure that you like and comment on it because we're going to talk about how to buy dog go to the moon, which so far as the number one meme coin in Bitcoin. I know people will say, well, who cares about meme coins? Well, let me just show you something. First of all, if you go to CoinGecko right now, you look at the trending and largest gainers, what do you see in those six right there? Well, it's not altcoins. It's not regular layer ones. It's not L2s or L3s or real world assets or even AI. What it is, is meme coins. And I know people laugh at this, but that's what it's going to be this cycle. Cycle before in 2021 was NFTs and the cycle before that was ICOs. This will probably be meme coins. And you're going to see that the top six, I don't know what the heck these all are. I don't know what Rad Bitcoin is, Phil, Heather Beast, Troy, Asset, Act, I, I don't know what that is. But it's just amazing uh, what meme coins can do. And then lastly, uh, like I was alluding to this, we did a video just four days ago. And I talked about how there was they were using AI to trade and to be on their to run their uh, social media platforms, and it's called Truth Terminal. And they were buying a bunch of these meme coins as a bot, essentially, and they made like millions of dollars in like a couple of days. And it was cool about the video is that they I gave you the uh, wallet which you could take a look at and see what they're getting into. And uh, right now, all those meme coins, they sold pretty much all of them and they got into something called baby goat. So I'm not saying that you should get into that. I'm just saying it is an interesting thing of how these meme coins are kind of 
working around and people are getting into them and what will happen. If you want to watch that video, there's a link in the description. But that's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing when we talk about it. it's time sensitive. Now, I want to stick around. I'll do a little Q&A, answer all your questions to the best of my abilities, and then we'll get out of here. But if you got to go take off, I appreciate you. Thanks so much for stopping by. And then as a reminder, tomorrow we're going to do NFA Live with a guy from Coin Bureau and Ben at uh, Into the Cryptoverse. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about 60% uh, Bitcoin dominance. And maybe we'll talk to Guy about dollar cost averaging in the latest video we did. So that's it for that one.